Hi and welcome to another WASGeek video. Today we'll talk about my newly acquired Vostok Amphibia, a uniquely constructed Soviet era watch that in my opinion deserves more credit than it gets. But first, let's start off with something very American, the SR-71 Blackbird, a supersonic spy plane that has gained a cult status in the history of aviation. And one can easily see why. With its unique look and incredible speed capabilities, it was and still is a wonder to behold. The reason I'm mentioning it is the unique way it was constructed. At the time of making the Blackbird, there were no other planes developing such speeds for so long, meaning no other plane had to endure such high temperature changes. Because of this, there were no sealants available that could work at both high temperatures that this plane achieved in supersonic flight and low temperatures while being on the ground. So instead of solving the problem, the engineers did the simplest thing possible. They ignored it. Well, not quite. You see, they made the plane work perfectly in the air when it's heated up and all the plates are expanded due to high temperatures. So in the air, the plane was very tight and worked perfectly. Unfortunately, that meant that while on the ground, or even in subsonic flight as the plates cooled off, certain parts of the plane would stop being sealed, resulting in actual fuel leaks. This is the reason these planes have pans underneath them while parked, to catch the leaking fuel. The reason I'm mentioning this story is because the amphibia is constructed in a similar way, but we'll get to it a bit later. Let's see how it came to be. In the late 60s, Soviet Navy required watches for their divers. And instead of going to the established watch companies who already offered divers watches, like Blanc Pond or Rolex, Soviets decided to make their own dive watch. Even more interesting is the fact that the government refused to buy Western patents on the already existing construction solutions, which meant the required water resistance had to be achieved in a new, original way. Now the burden of coming up with that new construction came down to two chief engineers at Vostok Watch Factory, Mikhail Novikov and Vera Belova. The two had to start from scratch and after a few years they came up with a new originally constructed diver's watch, the Amphibia. A diver's watch that had a unique way of sealing the back without deforming the gasket and the precisely shaped lucite crystal that deformed underwater up to half a millimeter which made the watch more water resistant the deeper you went. This makes the Amphibia a true part of horological history and in my opinion an underappreciated watch. A case back on a regular watch works as a giant screw that when screwed in compresses the gasket which seals the watch. Unfortunately as you're screwing in the case back you're not only pushing down on the gasket but you're also shearing it which deforms it and can sometimes even break it if it's not greased properly. It also means that you should change the gasket every time when you open the back. Since the amphibia couldn't use that construction, they came up with, in my opinion, a superior way. On the amphibia, the case bag is one part and the threaded locking ring is another. This means that the case bag lies flat on the gasket, not rotating left or right, as it sits in these keyways. The locking ring that you screw in only moves the case bag straight down at the gasket with no shearing effect. Because of this, the gasket on the amphibia doesn't have to be changed no matter how many times you open or close the back. Also because the case back is not attached to the, lock, to the locking ring, as you dive deeper and the water pushes on the watch, the case back can be pressed even harder against the gasket by the water pressure itself, making the watch tighter the deeper it goes. It's such a simple and yet such a brilliant solution. The same is true with the crystal. The thickness and shape were precisely calculated to deform in just the right way to seal the watch more the deeper you dive. But then again, not too much as not to touch the hands of the watch and stop the movement. Novikov said that was the hardest thing to calculate and figure out on this watch. And this is where we go back to our story of the SR-71 Blackbird from the beginning of the video. A regular diver's watch is always at its 100% water resistance, while the amphibia changes its water resistance as you dive deeper. 
So just as the SR-71 Blackbird is leaking on the ground but becomes perfect in the air, the amphibia has just an average water resistance while out of the water. But as soon as you start diving with it, everything tightens up and the watch starts working as it was designed to. Another unique feature is the clutch system on the crown that makes it wobbly as soon as you touch it, which does give people the feeling of low quality even though it's a safety feature as it disconnects the crown from the stem, so shock cannot be transferred to the movement if it were to occur. And the movement is a completely in-house made 31 jeweled automatic caliber 2416 that comes with 31 hours of power reserve, a shock absorbing system and hand winding option. The service interval on these movements is 10 years, confirming their ruggedness and making them the true AK-47s of the watch world. So a fully in-house built watch with unique construction and a true military history. If it were Swiss made, you would have to pay north of $5,000 for it. But this will not cost you $5,000. It will not even cost you $500. This watch can be yours for just a little over 50. So how is that possible? Well, they're simply producing it the same way they did 40 years ago. Absolutely no advancements or evolutions have been made to improve anything. The bezel is still bidirectional with a simple wire tension spring giving it resistance. It is also made of chromed brass and so is the crown, meaning the brass underneath will eventually show as you wear the chrome out. The bracelet is appalling and as my friend said pulls up to two hairs an hour. The case is completely polished in a cheap looking way and the overall fit and finish is kind of dodgy on some places like the case back. The loom was also pretty poor before, but I must admit it's the one thing they have obviously been working on, as it's pretty decent on my model. It's in line with Seiko 5 models I have, and I am able to read the time when I wake up in the middle of the night. Now despite all these little flaws, the watch is still brilliant. The fit and finish of the dial and the rest of the watch is amazing for the price. And whatever you dislike or ruin on this watch can be ordered and replaced for prices that are 10 times lower than what some people pay for leather straps. All this combined with half a dozen case shapes and hundreds of dial combinations has made the Amphibia a cult classic and one can be found in almost every watch collection. I got this one because it was cheap and wanted to do a video on its unique history and construction. But after receiving it and wearing it for more than a month now, I have fallen completely in love with it. And now, I can definitely call myself an Amphibia fanboy. I did do some light modding, like brushing the top of the case and bezel to reduce the bling factor. But also left the sides polished to have some alterations. I also have an aftermarket dial, hands and bezel ready to be installed. But I learned to love this dial and these hands so much that the modding might not happen at all. Well, the second hand will be replaced as this one is ridiculously short. But other than that, I really love the look and feel of this watch. Well, this completes this week's review, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.